Washington Journal continues. At our, at our table this morning is the former Democratic presidential candidate, Jason Palmer. Remind our viewers why you ran against Joe Biden. Yeah. So back in October and November of last year, it's hard to put our mind back there, but everybody was saying, two-thirds of Americans were saying they wanted someone different to run for president. And uh, after a while of talking to my CEOs, I've been an investor in entrepreneurs for the last 20 years. Enough of them said, you know, someone like you should run, someone who's an entrepreneur with a business background who actually focuses on conscious capitalism. You could bring a new message to the country, and even though you have a 99% chance of not winning, maybe you could get on the radar. Maybe you can make a difference. And so that's what I decided to do. You became the first candidate to defeat a sitting president in a primary since Senator Kennedy beat Jimmy Carter in a string of 1980 Democratic contests. You won the American Samoa contest. American Samoa, yes. So tell us yeah. how you did that. Yeah, well, I think a lot of it has to do with the message. So that might be the only place in the country where Joe Biden and I spent about the same amount of money. I spent $5,000 campaigning in American Samoa, and clearly they didn't spend that much money either. But that meant that I could actually talk to people individually, and they would get to know me just like they know Joe Biden. And, you know, the message resonated. That's partly why one of the people I'm announcing today that I'm endorsing is Louisa Quaya who's running for Congress in American Samoa. She's one of the people that heard the message, voted for me, and said, this is the kind of thing I want to do. I want to get into public service. What was your message? The message is about how we have this constant debate going on. Is America going to be a capitalist country? Do we want to become a socialist country? Like, where are we coming out on that big debate? And there is a middle way that's well established. It's called conscious capitalism. And it basically means that companies can be more than just about profit. Uh, if companies are just about profit, they do have lots of innovation that they do. They do provide great products and services. But over time, they don't treat their people well. They might uh, cause problems in the environment. Conscious capitalism is a way to have a multi-stakeholder approach to improving capitalism so it works for all people. What are you doing with that message today? Well, the biggest thing we're doing with that message today is we are endorsing candidates around the country. So I tried my best to run for president. I'm sorry I didn't win. But hopefully now, by passing the torch on to 20 younger people who are running for Congress, people who are purple in their orientation, like I'm purple in my orientation, some of my policies sound Republican, some of my policies sound Democratic. I do believe there is a strong middle in this country that actually wants companies to do good for the world believes that capitalism is the right economic system for America, but believes we have to have a functioning government that actually moderates that capitalism and provides opportunity for all. And right now our government is kind of functioning, but not functioning well enough, and we need it to function better. So if we get younger people into office, into Congress, and we start passing more bipartisan legislation that's more uh, inspired by younger people, by the causes that they believe in, we're going we're gonna to turn this country around. We can do it. I will state the obvious. Joe Biden is not younger. Why did you then endorse him? Yeah, that was a very difficult decision for me because uh, on the one hand, I'd been running against Joe Biden. and I went out of my way to never speak ill of Joe Biden. I actually think he's been a great public servant for the last 50 years. But at some point, people do need to pass the torch along. And I do still hold out hope that maybe in the next few months, maybe at the convention, Joe Biden might say we're going to pass the torch to a governor like Gavin Newsom or Gretchen Whitmer or Pritzker. Uh, it may not happen. And if it doesn't happen, Biden is clearly the best choice when it's Biden versus Trump. Uh, and that's because Donald Trump has proven he's uh, just not honest with the American people. He's all about himself. You know, I try not to get into the whole all the negativity about Trump. I want to focus on the positive. But you know, that's how I feel when it comes to the presidential race. It's no question. Joe Biden is the better choice. You started an organization called Together. Correct. What's the goal? So Together, exclamation point, is the way I usually describe it. Uh, its goal is to get young people involved in politics. We're going to try to get a million young people registered to vote this fall through partnerships with places like Larry Sabato's Center for Politics at the University of Virginia, uh, working with Beto O'Rourke's organization in Texas, we're trying to build as many partnerships as possible with people on the ground, grassroots organizations that can actually get out young people to register to vote. 
And then those people that register to vote, those young people, let's get younger candidates elected. So the candidates that I'm here to talk about today are Luis Acquaya in American Samoa, Rebecca Cook in Wisconsin, Frank Pierce in North Carolina, and Adam Frisch in Colorado. These are younger people with a business background. They're entrepreneurs by background. They believe in purple policies working across the aisle. And they're not lifetime politicians. They're people who actually, you know, Rebecca's been a waitress. Uh, Frank worked his way through college by working in restaurants. These are people who kind of built themselves up uh, from the ground level and believe our government should work for the people. How is your group funded? And how much money do you plan to spend? So we plan to raise 10 to $20 million. So any of you out there who know people with uh, resources who want to build a strong bipartisan center, a younger center, please do go to togetherpurple.org and donate. Uh, honestly, most of the donors are going to be grassroots people, people who donate $10, $25, $100. This will be like what Bernie Sanders did when he ran for president four years ago. And it's a lot of young people that are going to donate who say, you know what, there is a way for us to take our country back. Let's chip in a little bit, put it together. We'll also generate some funding from people who funded the No Labels Movement, the Forward Party, other organizations that have kind of a bipartisan centrist feel to them. Will you be working with the Biden campaign? I also am in communication with the people from the Biden campaign, but we've co-founded together. So I'm not the sole founder. Deborah Perry Piscioni, Kwame Jackson are my co-founders, a Republican and an independent. The organization itself is going to invest in Democratic candidates and Republican candidates. It's really important that this organization be purple from the beginning. But I want to be honest about it. I'm the blue person who's the founder or co-founder of this organization. And Rebecca is a Republican and Kwame is an independent. How will you get young people to participate when polls show they are not engaged politically? They, they're tuning it out. There was and, an article just this morning, big yeah. article, yeah. And, and where are you politicians? Yeah, so the biggest way to get young people out is to put young people in charge. So I have helped uh, invest in and start more than 25 companies in my life. And usually when you start a company, you have a couple young entrepreneurs, and then you create a board of gray hairs that help advise you. We're doing this the opposite. So I have uh, co-founded with Deborah and Kwame. We're both, all three of us, about 50 years old. And we're recruiting a board of people in their 20s and early 30s who are going to oversee us. And my goal is if we raise this 10 to $20 million and we get 20 people elected to Congress by December time frame, I'm going to hand this organization over to those young people who've become our board and say, this is yours now. Run forth. And that's a big part of the goal of Together is to help make it easier for young people to raise money for the causes, companies, and campaigns that they believe in. It's sort of easy for me to raise money. It's very difficult to raise money when you're 21, 22 years old, trying to start a company, trying to start a campaign. And we need to change that. So we're going to build a technology platform with some of that money. It's not just going to go into advertising and be kind of wasted away. We're actually going to build a technology platform so this can become a long-term movement run by young people for young people across the whole country. All right. Well, let's get to calls. Crystal in Philadelphia, Democratic caller. Good morning. Good morning, Crystal. Question or comment? Uh, good morning, America. I heard of the Mr. Palmer. Um, I did vote for Biden, and I will be voting for Biden. I appreciate his efforts. It's very important that young people do get involved because their future is at hand. Um, I'm from a family of 10. All of us have been lifelong Democrats. Um, most of my neighbors <laughs> and friends, we realize the importance of involving yourselves in, in, in shaping the government. Um, too many people, I will say, on the other side has drank the Kool-Aid and des uh, delusions and uh, conspiracies and uh, January 6th, they don't want to. They don't want to watch. I watched that for hours and didn't believe, didn't believe what, what was going on. And, and they'll make excuses for different silly reasons. Oh, oh, they were against President Trump, and, and, and the boy is a con man and a crook. A, he's a, he's a president of the Losers Club. All right, Crystal. Stop. So, Jason Palmer, do young people? participate, pay attention to that, that type of conversation, or what are the issues that are motivating them? 
Well, the issues that are motivating them are things that young people care about. So they care about women's reproductive rights. They care a lot about gun safety or gun violence reduction. They care a lot about climate change because they think the whole world is going to boil over and it might not be great for them or even their children. They care about housing affordability. It takes forever to actually be able to buy a house if you're a young person. And so honestly, the January 6th and kind of the negativity, which I even fell into myself a few seconds ago, uh, it turns them off. That's why there's a poll out just today saying that 70% of them are thinking they're not going to vote at all. They don't think either of the candidates really stand for them. We have to get to them and help them realize, yes, this is a difficult choice for president in this election, but you need to get involved. You know, the older generations, we've screwed up the country for you. We've screwed up the world, in fact. And you need to get involved and take over. And this is a movement to try to help them do that. Uh, but I totally sympathize and empathize with the caller's point of view that uh, you can't go two seconds without seeing Donald Trump on the front page or you know in the media in some way with everything that's going on. But we have to try to push that aside and be focused on the positive and be focused on younger people and taking our government back. Could the younger voters make a difference in this election? Huge, yes, for Huge. sure. The younger voters will make a difference in this election. And they are always discounted. And that's because, you know, my entire life, the 80s and 90s, 2000s, there was always talk about would the young people come out to vote? And they really never came out to vote, despite a lot of efforts in prior decades. However, in the last election in 2020, the largest number of young people voted than ever before. And it's going to happen again, even though they're very, you know, disappointed, dissatisfied right now. We've got to get them energized. We've got to get them registered. And we actually know how to do it is the crazy thing. We know how to get people registered for less than $5 per registration. It's having an army of volunteers on college campuses all over the country in August and September when the students come back to school, get their peers to sign them up. That's who they listen to. We're also going to be working with a number of athletes and influencers and celebrities who want to be part of this cause as well. And that's going to get them out even more because these are people that they look up to who are in their 20s who they want to be like. Think of singers, celebrities, et cetera, who I can't mention today. That's our next announcement coming in another oh, two, three on, weeks. Oh, come on. You can make some news here. No, no. But some of the people I'm talking to, it's kind of shocking to me because I admire their music or I admire their movies. Um, but the goal is to get uh, a number of those folks on board and get them to, to get the young people out. Joseph in New Jersey, Republican. Hi, Joseph. Hey, how are you? Uh, just let me make a couple points. Uh, you let some uh, guy before ramble on for about 20 minutes. I couldn't believe some of the things he was saying. I just, I'm about the same age as your guest, and uh, he just said the president, all you could, all you do is turn the TV on. You got President Trump on there. Well, everything I'm about to say is true. I'm not a QAnon nut job, so don't cut me off. They tried to frame President Trump. I don't know if you were around in this country when it happened with with the tools of my government, they tried to frame him, and they were investigating him for two years for nothing before the man was even president. So that's two years, and now they're doing it again after he's president. They never, they never tried to arrest Hillary Clinton when the whole Russian collusion was a campaign donation. She just got a fine, but they're trying to lock up Trump. So that's why he's on TV. He's fighting for his life. And then you're telling me about the young voters. They want to uh, be part of the system. When they turn the TV on, you got Hunter Biden on Air Force Two for four years making money off his, off his father, who the father knew what was going on, making millions of dollars, then giving it to his, his, uh, his, uh, his nieces, his uncles. Is that the, is that the America you, you think Americans want? That's an easy one to answer. No, Americans don't want a place that's all about scandals happening in Washington. Uh, whether they be Donald Trump or anyone else. What they want is young people who look like them, like you and me, who actually are focused on solving issues like solving immigration, solving gun violence problems, solving the budget deficit. Our budget deficit is so large and our debt is now up to 100 percent of GDP. You rarely see Democratic candidates talking about this, but this is one of the largest things we need to solve. Right now, the average American, if you take all of our debt and you add it up, it's $110,000 per person. You know, that's every adult, every child, every adolescent owes $110,000 just because of the federal government's national debt. 
Uh, the New York Times ran a recent poll that found in the battleground states mm -hmm. for this November, the former president and President Biden are essentially tied among 18 to 29 year olds. Your That's reaction right. to that? That's right. Well, at first, I, I really had to dig into it because I met a number of young people who said, I hate them both, sort of like the caller that was just on there. And I said, well, why do you hate President Trump? And I'm not even going to go into those reasons because we all know them and some of them were just said. But I asked them closely, like, why do you think you hate President Biden? And it really came down to they felt like he wasn't working for them. Every time they saw him on TV, he was talking about Ukraine. He was talking about Israel. He was talking about international affairs or things that didn't have to do with young people. And then I would say, well, what about uh, college loans? They say, well, I didn't even go to college or I dropped out of college. I don't have any college loans. And two thirds of Americans did not go to college and did not graduate to co from college who were of that age in the 20s. And so college debt is not their major issue. Their major issue is how do I actually get a job? And I have this inflation problem where I can't afford things. I can't even afford like one of the most precise examples is a, uh, a young woman in New Hampshire I talked to. She said, I said, do you have a housing affordability problem? She said, no, I have a rent deposit problem. I can't afford to pay first month's rent, last month's rent, and the rent deposit. That's the problem. That's why I'm living in this group house where I feel unsafe and I can't get out of it. And it's because I can't afford the $6,000 I need to get out of that situation. And that's their that's their issues. And honestly, that's the same issue I heard pretty strongly from the black community as well, is what are you doing to take care of my economic situation? And those are two groups, young people and the African American community, that are voting differently, or at least responding to polls differently, that the Democratic Party needs to do a much better job of reaching out to. Now together, we're focused on young people. Getting young people elected is the antidote here. The, the president was, President Biden and uh, the vice president were in Philadelphia yesterday trying to make an appeal to, mm -hmm. to black voters. Yeah. How important do you think that is and what, what are you seeing yeah. about his chances with the black voters this time around? Well, I think that's really interesting is that we were very close to going on TV in Philadelphia and then all of a sudden the Biden administration said, hey, we're going to go to Philadelphia and, and do this work. So clearly they're hearing the same things that we are. And what we're hearing is that the African-American community uh, feels taken for granted, hasn't been listened to. Their economic issues have not become core issues uh, of the administration of the last four or five years. And that's, you know, that they're correct. That hasn't been the core focus of the administration. If you turn on the TV and you hear about international wars or if you hear about you know, the Inflation Reduction Act, which is really a great climate change bill that they should have talked about, how great that is for climate change. Um, but none of the core issues of the average American voter who makes $50,000 a year has actually been a priority for the last 12 to 24 months. That's an issue. Explain your, when you say we were going to go into Philadelphia, what does yeah. that mean for people who aren't familiar with political yeah. decisions? Well, and honestly, I'm learning it too. As somebody who, you know, I, I looked at my Wikipedia page the other day and it says, Jason Palmer, politician. I'm like, I'm not a politician. <laughs> I'm actually a small business person and an investor. But apparently now I am a politician. But, you know, when you're looking to how do you actually get attention for your message, you try to look for the places that are kind of the, the hot spot where the media would go. So I, actually, I was very close to going down to Georgia. And then President Biden was suddenly the commencement speaker at Morehouse College. And so we decided not to do that because I don't want to accidentally run into President Biden. Then it seems like I'm still campaigning out there. Uh, so there was a lot of activity in Philadelphia. There's an organizing movement that's going on there that if the Democratic Party doesn't really reach out to African Americans in Philadelphia, then Philadelphia won't vote the way that it's voted in many, many prior elections, and Joe Biden could lose the state of Pennsylvania. These are all new things that I'm learning as almost like a Padawan learner in politics. Uh, and so we were going to go there to try to create a rally among young people, uh, especially African Americans in Philadelphia. Um, but we decided, you know what, it's going to seem too much like I'm still campaigning. Let's not do that. Because I'm not campaigning for president anymore. I'm trying to get 20 young people elected to Congress. Uh, let's show you and our viewers what he had yeah. to say in Philadelphia yesterday. Yeah. The threat that Trump poses is greater in his second term than his first. It's clear that when he lost in 2020, something literally snapped in the sky. No, I'm serious. That's why January 6th happened, when he unleashed an insurrection. 
Now he's running again and is clearly unhinged. He calls insurrectionists who stormed the Capitol patriots, patriots. If reelected, he wants to pardon, quote, every one of them. Let me ask you, what do you think he would have done on January 6th if black Americans had stormed it? Think about this. What do you think would have happened if black Americans had stormed the Capitol? I don't think he'd be talking about pardons. It's the same guy who wanted to tear gas you as you peacefully protested George Floyd's murder. The same guy who still calls the Central Park Five guilty, even though they were exonerated. He's that landlord who denies housing applications because of the color of your skin. He's that guy who won't say Black Lives Matter and invokes neo-Nazi Third Reich terms. We all remember Trump is the same guy who unleashed birthism, the birthism lie against Barack. And then Trump tells you he's the greatest president. I love this one. He says he's the greatest president for black people in the history of America, including more than Abraham Lincoln. I mean, can you fathom that? We're in the hell. Like I said, I think he injected too much of that bleach in his skin. I think it affected his brain. Jason Palmer, given everything that you're learning, mm -hmm. is that an effective message? That's a very effective message to people who are core Democrats, who are the people that I met in the primaries all over the country. That is not the right message to reach independent voters and young voters who want to hear about how you're going to solve our nation's problems and how you're going to move our country forward. And, you know, I have to be honest with you that I'm trying to get a meeting with President Biden, but I think President Biden probably thinks, oh, that's that little guy who won in American Samoa. Like, keep him happy over there. Uh, but if I got a chance to meet with him, I would say, you're right, that Trump is a very huge danger to our democracy, and that's the way to get out core primary voters for Democrats. But we need to focus a lot more on young people and independents who are not going to turn up at the polls or are going to vote for a third party candidate if we don't reach out to them with a positive message about how we're going to improve their lives and solve the real problems in our country. And if President Biden wants to keep giving speeches like that, he can. But I'm going to be out there talking about the positive messages for young people and independents and hopefully we can become a team together because I think both messages are really needed here. We'll go to San Antonio. Buggy's there, a Republican. Good morning to you. Yeah, hey, what's up? Uh, I kind of came here to say that I think more young people should be, you know, running the government instead of these old geriatric fucks. Well, in Brownsburg, Indiana, independent. Kevin, question or comment? Hey, how you doing? Morning. Hey. Hey, thank you. Hey, man, this is what I've been looking for. I try to get my son to do what he works in uh, in, the, in D.C. I told him to do the same thing. He's a, a Democrat. Yeah. I told him to get a Republican and independent together and come together and, and change things. Uh, that message that uh, President Biden just did, that's terrible. It's a terrible message. He has a history against black people, too. Uh, I don't know what you, what you consider young. I'll be 50 this year. Uh, I think I'm not going to vote this year. Uh, I'm disheartened in the, in the political system. But hearing you talk, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody to be in the middle, to be young. And like you said, it needs to be purple. I'm tired of hearing rhetoric about this person's bad, this person's bad, Trump is bad, Biden is bad. Tell me what you're going to do. I, I, I consider myself young. I don't want to keep hearing uh, the boogeyman, the boogeyman, the boogeyman. Everything Joe Biden has said, the, middle, the, the young cat, they don't care nothing about the January 6th. They don't care nothing about no indictments, no trials, none of that stuff. What are you going to do? What's going to make my life better? And then, like you said, the, uh, you said you talked to somebody who mentioned they couldn't afford housing, yeah. so they, they had to do a group home. I'm actually a landlord, and I had to gear towards uh, a group home type of situation for college students. I rent out four-bedroom apartments, uh, four-bedroom housing, because people can't afford a single family couldn't afford a rent. And then my taxes went up from $1,800 to $4,300 on my rental property. So I have to have a high rent to even make any money and make the mortgage on that property. But what, you, what you're what you doing, like you said, if you're serious about 
and true about what you're yeah. doing. I'm going to get on your website. I think this is what I've really been looking for. Just st- stay true to the mission. Thank Please you. Please stay true to the mission. All right, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much. And togetherpurple.org is the website. Please definitely sign up. I would love to even talk to you personally. He is exactly the kind of person that I've been uh, seeing and talking to all around the country for the last six months, who is, I would say, middle-aged like myself. I'm 52 years old, so I'm like he's 50 years old. But we still consider ourselves young, in part because a lot of our leaders are in their 70s and 80s, but also because we kind of vibrate at the wavelength of 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds. We're innovative people. He's a business person. He runs and has multiple apartments. And so small business is, this, is the core of this country. I actually think small business is the audience that most speaks to young people who want to be entrepreneurs. And these independents, not enough polls have been done to say, how many of the independents are actually small business people? I bet it's like 75% of them, actually. And it's because you know we have this humanitarian side to us, but we also have this side that's about, well, it's got to make it work. we got to make the numbers work. The whole thing needs to work out. And if you have both of those going on where you care about people and you care about making the numbers work, you want solutions. You don't want you know, demonizing rhetoric on either side. And you definitely don't want the crazies running the show. You want stable, center-oriented people running the show. Common sense policies, I like to call it. Nathaniel's in Lamar, yeah. Mississippi. Democratic caller. Hi, Nathaniel. Good morning. Good morning. Look, I'm sitting here watching this, and I watched the speech you just showed about Biden in Philadelphia, and I think it was a good speech. Uh, And Jason there, uh, I really uh, like what he's doing, and I appreciate what he's doing, and we need more like him. I'm a Democrat. I'm a 69-year-old black man. I vote every election except one. And uh, I missed that time because I was sick. But every other election, I vote. Now, getting back to this election, look, I can't understand why people see so much in Donald Trump. I've been knowing Donald Trump since 1974, and that man has been for himself and his family. Don't care about nothing else. And, like, when January 6th happened, I was watching January 6th. I watched it all. And they're going to holler and say it was a peace protest or, or whatever. You know, they was just there at the White House visiting. You don't visit the White House like that and like the man said. If those Black Lives Matter had been uh, at that Capitol that day, I think it would have been a lot of people killed, to be honest. And then he goes around, and, and all he don't get on and say nothing good when he's speaking. Everything he says is wrong and a lot. All right, okay. Nathaniel. Well, Jason Palmer, reaction listening to that caller? Well, I definitely that caller is a, a type, uh, same as many people I met on the road during the primaries as well. Core Democratic voter who vibrates positively to this focusing on young people, focusing on solutions. But we all kind of get pulled into this, oh, but about Trump, but about Trump, but about Trump. So I would encourage all of you, and I'm trying to train myself too. I have not gotten this perfectly down. I'm, I'm Honestly, I'm not like one of those airbrushed politicians who knows everything to say. And uh, we have to stop talking about Trump. We have to stop thinking about Trump. He's going to do his own thing, and people are going to be turned off by it. Let that happen. Focus on the positive solutions for the country. It's morning in America, and we're going to make the country better with the following set of policies. We're going to make your life better with the following set of policies. And you have to keep reminding yourself, don't get sucked into the negativity of Trump. That's not how we're going to win. And more importantly, help young people. Help young people raise money. Help young people be successful. Focus on the young people. Tell us about the tech platform that you're building yeah, yeah. and how much money, you know, how it work, how much money, et cetera. Sure. As somebody who started four companies and invested in 25, I know exactly the technology platform that needs to be built here. It's going to cost between 2 and $3 million to build version one of it. The goal is actually to build a platform that enables young people to ma- raise money for their causes, companies, and campaigns. And imagine it's sort of like if Venmo uh, had a baby with TikTok and LinkedIn at the same time so that you actually can find people who are running entrepreneurial ventures. You can learn about their ventures. You can donate to them. It's almost like a crowdfunding platform, you could also call it. Um, this, Our goal is to roll this out before November so that it affects the election positively. However, it's got a long-term business plan. This is a 10-year thing we're going to try to build. It's a startup company. 
and I'm actually recruiting investors right now who are going to write checks of twenty-five thousand to a million dollars. It's going to add up to two to three million dollars to build out the platform to enable this crowdfunding, uh, crowdfunding for causes, companies, and campaigns. What's it called? Uh, it Given is called name? Together! Exclamation point! Right now. Uh, we're small enough. We're only a nine-person company, but we're growing volunteers as fast as you can imagine. Our goal is to have 10,000 volunteers by the fall, which makes me want to like look in the Guinness Book of World Records and see like what's the fastest a company has gone from zero employees to 10,000 employees. Because if we actually are at 10,000 employees by uh, September, we may have beaten that record. Uh, and, and that's where you'll find it, at togetherpurple.org. Go to Diane, Jacksonville, Florida, Republican. Hi, Diane. What? Good morning. Good morning, uh, Greta, and good morning, Mr. Palmer. Thank you. I, <laughs> I am, uh, yes, I am Republican. I have six beautiful children that are all very successful. One is an anesthesiologist. The other one is a school teacher. My son is in a Navy, in the, uh, in the Navy. He's a chief. I have a daughter that's a, um, 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 a loan officer, and my other daughter is in the Army. The other one, unfortunately, is deceased now. But what I'd like to say, uh, they're all under 50. I encouraged each one to register to vote when they were 18 so that they can, uh, you know, be a part of our political system. I sat them down, explained whatever they questions they had. And I'm so proud of them because they're very political. Some are Republican, some are Democrat. And I have encouraged them to be very active in our political system. The only disappointment they had this year is who were, who were running between Biden and Trump. They felt they both were way too old. Um, it's At this point, it's like are they even going to vote this year? Uh, I am so disappointed in our choices. I will not be voting for Trump, even though I am a Republican. This will be the first year I will unfortunately be voting for Democrat. I have no choice because I love my democracy. I love the freedom that we share here in America. And I would not vote for someone that caused the January 6th Capitol riot. I don't care what the Republicans say. He is not being persecuted. He is being tried for crimes that he has committed. All right, it's Diane, I'm going to jump in at that point. Jason Palmer. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for voting for President Biden this fall. But the second thing I would say is focus on the other races. So every time you go to the polls, you fill out the little box or you pull the lever for president, but look at those other races. They actually are often more important even though they don't get all the media coverage. That's why we are recommending and endorsing and providing funds to candidates who are running for Congress, young people who are running for Congress who are in their 30s. If we're lucky, we'll get some that are in their 20s as well, um, who have an entrepreneurial background, who want to help bring common sense solutions to Washington kind of turn down the noise, make it more collaborative. Young people are very collaborative. I've been going to a number of college campuses and I've been really impressed at how the Democratic Club and the Republican Club hang out with each other. They do debates with each other. They have cordial relationships with each other. It's not like Washington at all. It's more like these are the people that stay up all night talking about political issues and care about political issues just like when I was in college. And Focus on those congressional races. Who are the best young people to vote for in those races? A new poll that just came out, CNN's talking about it right now, of the young, the youth vote, ages 18 to, to um, 24, and they were just talking about the role that they can play. In 2000, the yep. youth vote was tied. In 2004, John Kerry only won it by single digits. Yep. 2008, former President Barack Obama wins it by 32 points. Yeah. Same margin in 2000 for, for President Biden. So if he does not reach that threshold of double digits, 30 or more with the youth vote, do you think he can win? I, I think that President Biden can only win by getting double digit support uh, from that youth vote. That's why I'm doing exactly what I'm doing. I mean, honestly, back in October of last year, 
I was having a happy life working with my eight startup companies. Built, They're all in education and workforce technology. I love them dearly. And basically I said, I'm going to take a year of my life and not just donate money to some candidates, but donate all the entrepreneurial know-how I have to trying to get young people energized and focused on a positive future for our country and voting and running for office. And that's what I'm doing. And I honestly think it's the best way that I can help President Biden. Uh, but it's not, you know, the only reason. This is a, we need to turn around all the polarization, get us all unstuck from negativity and all focused on a positive future for the country. Another part of that poll, yeah. when they ask that group of voters, do you want normalcy return to Washington, D.C., or do you want to see major change in Washington, D.C.? I would bet major change is what they want. 65%. Major change. 65%. Yeah, they so, want major change, yes. So what does President Biden, in your opinion, yeah. need to say if those voters want major change? Well, I would recommend that President Biden have a summit, and I'm making this up on the spot. <laughs> You're not supposed <laughs> to do that. But have a summit and invite all the young people that I've been meeting at college campuses across the country to come to Washington, D.C., to be on the White House lawn and just sit there and listen to them and actually invite Democrats, independents, and Republicans and let them explain to you how they can fix the country. In, in fact, invite the Speaker of the House, uh, Mike Johnson, to come there, too, and sit and listen at the same time. You need to actually figure out a way to listen to the young people. And honestly, I'm going to keep doing it kind of by myself, even though we're building a movement here. But I'm hopeful that both the DNC and the RNC actually reach out to our organization. We're in conversations with both of them. We're also in conversations with the Forward Party. We are all about bringing the entire country together focused on solutions to get more young people into power to help bring our country to the next level. All right, Armin Armand in Lakeland, Florida, Independent. Uh, good morning, C-SPAN. Thank you. Um, hey, Mr. Palmer, I'm, I'm just curious. You started out by saying a very negative thing about the country and its debt. Well, our debt, if everybody in the United States owns $110,000 in debt, how many people under the limit of uh, what, I, I mean, how many people would have, gotten $110,000 would be in the situation they're in. It's corporations and rich politicians that make these rules and regulations, for, and, and we have to pay the debt off. We have to pay the debt off. But we have all these politicians that are getting richer and all these corporations that are getting richer, and we're not getting any richer down here. We're not getting any extra money. I mean, they own this problem. Uh, President Trump drew the, brought the debt up six trillion dollars in his four years i mean yep. come on every republican that's gotten in there has brought the debt up and up and up and here we are just trying to stifle us and suffocate us and say oh we own a hundred and ten thousand i have kids that don't owe a penny i have myself i don't owe a hundred and ten thousand dollars to the government so i'd like you to explain there's your there's a message that's really not falling on the it's falling on deaf ears because there's a lot of people down here that say down here I say where I am I'm not rich I'm very poor and I, I'm living on social security and I've worked all my life but I've got a lot of friends I don't know anybody who owns a hundred and ten thousand dollars of your debt of, I mean not yours but the government's debt. It's the corporations and the politicians who are getting richer and richer and robbing from the poor people. It's like Robin Hood in reverse. Okay. They're, they're robbing from the poor. Understood, caller. Understood. We'll get a response. Yeah. So that is the rage that everyone feels when they understand about the debt. And that's why I keep bringing it up, even though when I was a Democratic candidate for president, Democrats are almost never talking about the debt. It's like I'm going on another show in a couple hours with Stephen Moore, who's a well-known kind of libertarian Cato Institute type person who's been railing against the debt for a number of years. And I was a member of the Concord Coalition a number of years ago, too. And uh, the debt is a very serious problem. It is, it is on not quite as big as climate change. Climate change is probably the biggest one if you take a 100-year look at the future. But the debt is a very serious problem. And it actually requires a much more complicated solution than I can just soundbite for you. But the main issue is that the biggest drivers of the expense side of the federal government are Social Security and Medicare. And you probably remember that when President Biden gave his State of the Union a while ago, this was a, two years ago, 
he actually said, we're not going to touch Social Security, we're not going to touch Medicare, and, you know, there was a hoo-ha in the audience, and everybody said, okay, we take it off the table. Well, that's taking off the table 60% of the federal budget that actually needs to be reformed. Social Security and Medicare are both going to basically go bust in the early 2030s, so 2033-ish. And we can't keep kicking that can down the road. Young people don't believe Social Security is going to be there for them, and they're not crazy. We actually need to reform it, and there's a very good set of policies that I'll be talking about on a subsequent uh, event later today about how we do that. But, you know, that's part of why people are angry is that all this debt and what did I get for it? Well, you didn't get very much for it. That's why we need to turn the country over to younger people with better solutions who are entrepreneurial in their mindset and they're not going to get sucked into this negativity politics. We'll hear from Amanda, who's in Little Rock, Arkansas, Democratic caller. Uh, yes, ma'am. One thing I wanted to say is this guy right here, he the reason why come we got trash like Donald Trump. He's still treating this man with respect. I don't get that at all. And then one one thing, the founding fathers would have hung Donald Trump. I can About definitely treating. respond to that. So yeah. I, first of all, I very much dislike, I would even say hate Donald Trump. I think he is a huge danger to our democracy, but it's, and it's really important that he be beaten this fall. That's why I am campaigning in favor of Joe Biden. However, I have to put that aside as the leader of an organization called Together that's going to be supporting 20 candidates for office and a focus on young people with solutions who are actually going to bring the country together. So you have to be able to hold both thoughts in your head at the same time. Trump, not good for our country. But the way to solve it is not to talk about Trump over and over and over again, is to talk about the young people and be focused on people like Frank Pierce in North Carolina or Rebecca Cook in Wisconsin or Louisa Quaya in American Samoa, uh, Adam Frisch, Colorado. We're getting ready to announce additional people in the next few weeks. These are young people with an entrepreneurial background who are actually going to take over Washington and turn it around, turn it inside out, bring that change that young people are asking for and that actually people of all ages want. They want Washington to be functional and to work like a well-run business, which, by the way, that's why people elected Donald Trump back in 2016, is they thought, oh, he's a businessman who runs you know, companies well. Well, Actually, not really. He kind of runs it like a family business, and it's chaotic and, and in many cases, illegal. So we don't want a business person like that. We want somebody who runs a good business that's community-oriented and that's helping make the world a better place. These candidates that you're backing, some are Republicans as well? That's correct, although not in this wave. All four in this wave are Democrats. Uh, the next wave will also be Democrats, and then we're going to be bringing on board not just Republicans that we support in the elections, but also to join the organization. There are going to be more people we announce as part of the organization to make it more purple-colored in its uh, leadership and board. Former presidential candidate, co-founder and CEO of Together! Explanation Point, Jason Palmer, thank you thank for you. the conversation. That's we great. appreciate it. Great. I appreciate it. After the break, when we come back, we'll talk with former White House press secretary and digital show host Sean Spicer. We'll talk about the former president's campaign efforts as well as any political news of the day. Stay with us. Since 1979, in partnership with the cable industry, 